I'm a proud uh, product of the, the late 60s. My dad was a small business owner, and I remember very vividly when Dr. King was assassinated that our city growing up in Pittsburgh, our, our cities, our communities all became destabilized. And I remember my dad's business being looted and burned at that time. I remember writing the sign with him saying, owned by a soul brother, so we could put the sign in the window so they wouldn't burn down our, our, our business. I remember my dad going to um, a large bank to get a loan to reopen his business. And of course, being a black man in the late 60s, um, no bank was gonna give him a loan. This is not the first time where, as a country, we've gone through this sort of racial r reckoning and awakening. George Floyd was killed right here in Minneapolis, just blocks from our office and where we're sitting today. And being able to do the work of diversity, equity, and inclusion, for me, is so that there's some little kid out there right now um, who's going through that same sense of anxiety, that same sense of, you know, what does this all mean for me? What does it mean for my future? Does anybody care? Does anybody see me and hear me? This work of DEI is to ensure that every single kid um, in our country sees themselves, feels that they have value and feels that their life matters. That's what this work is about. How do we move to a more dynamic future? And I think that's the secret sauce. I think that's what people really want to understand is how do we move forward together? It's important to understand the history and where we came from and to look at that history through the lens of inclusion in a much more honest way than we typically have. We as a bank see the work that we do, how our, our activities are actually serving our purpose as an organization and, and ensuring that our purpose is true for every single one of our stakeholders. We're seeing leaders become far more empathetic. We're seeing businesses begin to think about how inclusion is an integral part of their business strategy. And that's what's happening at U.S. Bank. The launch of the Access Commitment, which we launched back in February. And the Access Commitment really serves to, to do three things. One, to help catalyze equity for communities and families. It seeks to create greater access for small businesses. And it seeks to create greater equitable opportunities for employees. What's important about that work is every single one of our senior leaders on the managing committee, every single business line in our organization is involved in that work. And it's a really good example of how we've created new systems for collaboration, um, new partnerships, and really begun to integrate this notion of equity and inclusion as part of our business strategy. It's really important for us to have diversity at every level within the organization. Our customers are diverse. Our customers are increasingly diverse, and we need those lived experiences at the leadership roles where the strategic decisions are being made. Our core purpose is investing our hearts and our minds to propel human potential. And how do we propel human potential if we don't have leaders of color um, in senior leaderships, if we don't have people of color in senior leadership? So by investing in the people who are misrepresented in your corporation and diversifying your workforce, you're only helping the bottom line. To build a relationship with your customers that are diverse, you have to make sure you have um, a communication model and individuals who really exemplify the customer of the future. And so I think now more than ever, Big institutions like small businesses need to realize that we need each other and that culture plus capacity. A big bank needs somebody in culture that can help to translate the language to the new customer and the new customer needs a, a translator to understand how banks work. Um, and, and I think we're at a place where we need each other equal. The Wednesday, um, right at, following the, uh, the murder of George Floyd, I had a call from my customer saying that my branch is getting breaking into. So drove up there and uh, little did I know took a look at the branch and it was totally um, destroyed. I wanted our rebuild, not only a rebuild, but follow the message from our CEO where he says we want to be engaged with our community. We want our community to be a part of our banking. So the outcome was amazing. The finished product was amazing. It's a modern branch with the latest technology in the future of banking and where we're going. We're not only here in the community to do business, but we care and 
we're giving you some of the best technology, we're giving you some of the best outlines to do what you need to do to get where you need to be financially. When I say U.S. Bank has surrounded me with a great team of people, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm, I'm, we're just elated that you guys are doing this. You know, um, there's not many banks that would do what we're getting. And there's not a lot of people in my community being surrounded by people that actually care, by people that are actually helping my business grow. It is huge for us. One of the persistent problems um, that we recognized very early on in our work was the, the racial wealth gap. As we thought about being a bank, how we could make a real difference in social justice and in the advancement of communities, we realized that one of the places we could apply our core competency was to the racial wealth gap, which today currently stands at eight to one, meaning black households have one eighth the wealth of white households in this country. And that's not a black problem, that's an American problem. These racial wealth disparities actually impact every single one of us as Americans. It's a drag on the U.S. economy as a whole, and it actually is a drag on the household income of every single American household. So it's in all of our best interests um, to see us close those gaps so that we can all reach our, our full potential. So we're actually going to take a number of our business bankers of color, black business bankers in our organization, and we're going to pair them up with wealth advisors who will be their mentors um, over a period of time so that they can ultimately become wealth advisors. You know, there's an incredible trust gap between communities of color and the black community specifically and the financial industry. And that mistrust is well earned. There's over 400 years of reasons why there's, why there's mistrust. And so in order to close that trust gap, we need to make sure that we're taking some of these young business bankers and actually training them to be that sense of truth and um, that, that source of understanding um, for our clients. The second thing we're really proud to launch, this initiative around um, increasing home ownership in the black community is really critical. If we have coaches and people from the community who are in the branches, um, who understand the needs of the customers, um, it'll really sort of provide a different level of confidence, of credibility. Um, and trust um, that we think is going to be absolutely critical. So what we're doing to actually hold ourselves accountable is we've actually partnered with a national research institute, um, the Urban Institute, um, to help us build a measurement framework so that we can actually measure the outcomes, that we can understand how our investments have actually changed communities, that we're actually driving results. What I've discovered um, in doing this work is there's lots of people individually doing good work. The challenge is, is how do we do great work together? And for U.S. Bank, what that's meant for us is really thinking about our core competency and applying that core competency to these larger issues.